From the opinion pages of the Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. President Trump's former lawyer testifies to a New York grand jury. But what is the case that prosecutors seem to be trying to build against the former president? Welcome. I'm Kyle Peterson with the Wall Street Journal. We are joined today by my colleagues, columnist Bill McGurn and editorial board member Mene Ukwebarua. Michael Cohen, the Trump Organization's former fixer, testified for about three hours before a grand jury in Manhattan on Monday. And District Attorney Alvin Bragg has also invited testimony from Trump himself. The former president is expected to decline that offer to appear before the grand jury. But legal analysts are saying that asking the target of an investigation to appear generally generally signals that prosecutors are wrapping things up so we may get more news soon. But on that point, the media is full of trial balloons about what charges Bragg might bring against Trump. And the consensus is that they would involve his hush money payment in 2016 to Stormy Daniels. And here's Trump reacting to questions about whether he would drop out if he was indicted. Here he is speaking to reporters before his CPAC speech. These are witch hunts. These have been going on for a long time. They've weaponized justice in our country. It's a disgrace. And I think people are very angry about it. Even Democrats are very angry about it. So you'll stay uh, these in the are, Oh, absolutely. I wouldn't even think about leaving. It's a disgraceful thing that's going on. There's never, the country's never seen anything like it. And yeah, probably it'll enhance my numbers. But it's a very bad thing for America. It's very bad for the country. To lay a little bit more of the groundwork here about what the alleged coming charges might be. So Stormy Daniels was paid $130,000 by Michael Cohen in the lead up to the 2016 election. Prosecutors said a couple years ago that Cohen was reimbursed for that in the form of payments that were supposedly due to a retainer. And there was actually no legal retainer that existed. And so the charge that is being floated in the press is false falsifying business records. But what's notable about this bill is that falsifying business records in New York is generally a misdemeanor unless it is in furtherance of covering up another crime. And so the suggestion is that the other crime would be a campaign finance violation, that this $130,000 was an impermissible donation to President Trump's presidential campaign. And Bill, I find myself wondering, is this what it is all going to come down to? We're going to have a former president and a current 2024 candidate indicted, potentially sent to prison, and it's all going to come down to a campaign finance violation? That's what it looks like. It's really outrageous, especially considering how poor a job the New York prosecutor has done in the face of all of the explosion and crime in the city. They've spent months trying to dig something out, and they have this small crime based on an iffy theory about another crime. I think Mr. Trump is right. It would probably only enhance him. He He's going to make the argument, they're out to get me, they've always been out to get me, and this is all they've got. And I think it's going to further polarize America at a time we don't need it into making his supporters more loyal because they feel he's being unfairly persecuted and his attackers just in their zeal to get him looking at everything. The other thing to keep in mind here is that we don't know all of the evidence that Bragg might have gathered. And so it's hard to know. All we have is these trial balloons and leaks that are happening out in the media. But Mane, it looks to me like if this is where this investigation is going, there's a significant risk of overreach by Alvin Bragg, who, remember, is an elected Democratic prosecutor in Manhattan. So on the campaign finance point, for example, when Michael Cohen was sentenced to prison in 2018, I would point out a couple things. One is that there were all sorts of other crimes that were alleged here that are at the top of the news release from the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York, including that he allegedly concealed more than $4 million in personal income from the Internal Revenue Service, made false statements to a federally insured financial institution to obtain a 500000 home equity loan. And so this Stormy Daniels stuff was not even the, you know, the big charges that landed Michael Cohen in prison. But he does seem to have stipulated or admitted that this payment to Stormy Daniels was a campaign finance violation. But if Trump is being prosecuted, that is something that prosecutors would have to prove in court 
court. And one line of argument for the former president's defense attorneys would be that he thought it was a personal expense. You know, he made the payment to Stormy Daniels, who he allegedly had an affair with. He continues to deny that because he felt like he was being extorted. He was trying to avoid a blow up with his wife, Melania, in the days before the 2016 election day. And so, Manet, I think that's one avenue of Trump's defense that prosecutors would have to get over the hurdle. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if we ever do what Bragg has in his file in terms of things that might substantiate the idea that the improper payment to Michael Cohen really was made essentially as campaign contribution in the sense that it was intended for the specific purpose of shoring up Trump's campaign. I think that the counter argument that you laid out, the idea that Trump wanted to have Michael Cohen make the payment one and then reimburse him two was primarily for personal reasons is a very reasonable claim. It's completely sensible that Trump would not want the news of his alleged affair with Stormy Daniels to become public for reasons that have much more to do with his own family than specifically with the campaign. But short of any evidence that would directly link the repayment to Michael Cohen with the sort of improper election funding allegation that Bragg is investigating, it does seem as if it will come off as a stretch to anyone except the most devoted critics of Trump already. And so Bragg has to be considering that. How, what sort of evidence would we need for this to be a slam dunk? And otherwise, he should expect that people will think it's a completely political exercise. A couple other lines of defense also strike me. One is that Trump might be able to argue that he approved the payment to Stormy Daniels, but he wasn't aware of how the Trump organization was structuring that transaction or the reimbursement to Michael Cohen. He could also argue that he didn't have any intent to violate the campaign finance laws. And I would point again to the legal requirement. It's only a felony when the intent to defraud includes an intent to commit another crime or to aid or conceal the commission thereof. And so I guess the way that I read that, I'm not a lawyer, but the way that I read that is you'd have to prove that President Trump knew that it was a campaign donation and knew that that was in violation of the campaign finance law and intended a forethought to cover up the violation of those campaign finance laws. And that strikes me, Bill, as potentially a problem. I mean, this might be one of those situations where President Trump said to his staff, take care of it, and was not aware of all of the details. And then one final issue is, again, this is only a felony if it's covering up another crime. There's questions about what the state crime would be. Can you apply the state campaign finance crimes to a federal candidate, or alternately, can you apply a federal campaign finance law to this provision that requires the cover up another crime? Or does the New York law require a New York crime be covered up? And Bill, I mean, it strikes me as a whole lot of moving parts that Alvin Bragg has to consider here. And the precedent would be huge. And especially if you think about this going to a criminal trial in the run up to the 2024 election, this would be the first former president, I believe, ever charged, ever indicted. And he could be the first former president ever acquitted. I mean, that could be how Alvin Alvin Bragg goes down in history. Yeah, that could be very likely. We don't know the evidence, but as you pointed out, the case itself is a stretch. In the New York Sun today, Alan Dershowitz, who didn't vote for Trump, he says, is defending him against this prosecution. And he makes a point. It is in the nature of partisan selective prosecution that a target may well be technically guilty of some violation. The question is, would he have been prosecuted for that violation if he were not a political target. And I think that's a big question with Trump. You put any other name in there, it's not likely that Alvin Bragg would spend all this time on. I also think there are unintended consequences. You don't know what's going to happen. To me, what this is all setting up for is more focus on Hunter Biden and the Biden family because some Republicans want to play the same game. One final thought for me on the potential charges that are coming is you also have a credibility problem 
problem with what it seems like would be one of the main witnesses in this case, Michael Cohen, because as prosecutors are trying to prove all of these things about what Trump knew in 2016 about the payment to Stormy Daniels, what his intent was regarding that payment, one guy who might be able to answer those questions is Michael Cohen, who has his own credibility problems, and the Trump defense would certainly try to impeach him in front of the jury. And, Manet, it only takes one juror who thinks this is politicized justice to not get a guilty verdict here that Alvin Bragg would want if he's going to bring this case. So given all that, Manet, I mean, I guess, do you agree with the statement that Trump made at the top that we played, his statement before his CPAC speech, that any kind of indictment like this would only strengthen him as he is trying to reconsolidate his support among Republicans in advance of the 2024 primary? I'm not sure that I agree with Trump's statement that he'd be helped more than hurt by an indictment. I do think that since the midterm elections of last year, a lot of Republican voters became very, very disappointed with Trump's influence in the party and very disenchanted with him. And so the idea that he would be embroiled in more legal troubles in New York, and then also we have the parallel case in Georgia, I think could contribute to some people saying, we just need to shift this guy off stage. Maybe he did the crime. Maybe he didn't. Maybe the investigation's political, maybe it isn't. But either way, I don't want someone who's weighed down by all of this baggage. On the other hand, for those who are committed to Trump still, which I think is a smaller and shrinking portion of the party, they absolutely will be energized. And so I think both effects will obtain, but I would probably think that it would hurt him more than it would help him. I do think that in the event of an acquittal, if Bragg were to bring charges and then Trump were not convicted, that probably would have a more straightforwardly beneficial impact on his campaign. And so that would depend on how long it takes the case to proceed after Bragg brought an indictment. But either way, I think that Bragg should know that it's not worth bringing these charges for what seem like mostly political reasons, regardless of what impact it's going to have on Trump's campaign. 